everybody, welcome back for today's Community Conversation. Joining us here in studio is Las Cruces Police Chief Jeremy Story. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. So you've been the chief for some months now, but with the department for several years. Tell us about some of the initiatives that the department is working to expand. Um, I'll go over a few of them. Obviously, our number one goal as police officers in any department is to prevent crime. So we're really trying to take an evidence-based uh, crime reduction approach. And so partner, partnering with NMSU, doing studies, and making sure that what we're doing is working to drive down the higher crime we've seen over the past few years. Yeah, and obviously to make those initiatives happen and to combat this crime, you guys need personnel. Can you talk about what the current situation is with your department right now? As you know, departments across the country, they're continuing to face officer shortages. Tell us about that and how that's impacting your guys' operations. Yeah, so we're way better than we were in 2021, but we still uh, have about 25 to 28 vacancies. Um, and every department is dealing with that. So there's less people that want to be police officers now, and everybody's kind of competing for that smaller group. So it's been difficult for all departments, including us. And I guess tell us a little bit about, you know, the academy itself. What makes it unique? You were in charge of the academy, oversaw the academy for some time. So it's something that you care a lot about. Talk to us about that. What makes it unique? What makes it special? You know, we, we really put an emphasis on, or on scenario based training and evidence based training practices. We know a lot now. Um, a lot of the ways we did training in the past was not effective. Um, and so we have that data now and we need to implement it into our training at all levels, including the academy. And that's one thing we've really emphasized in the last few years. You also said that there's going to be a change as to when it starts, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so the, our next academy will start July 5th and there's applications. Um, we're receiving applications right now until the beginning of May. Okay. And typically how big is your guys' police academies? It depends. We, we usually start around 20 to 25. We had the one academy where we started 37 a couple years ago. Um, but average is somewhere around 20 to 25 starting. And is there anything really that people should know if they do plan to apply, I guess, any priors that they may have? I guess, what are some of the main things that you see people get disqualified for within LCPD? Um, some of it is drug use. Um, and then, of course, if there's any felony conviction, you're, you're it's automatic disqualifier, um, any misdemeanor conviction within three years. Um, and outside of that, a lot of it is at the discretion of the background investigation and me as a chief. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I guess, how can people apply if they would like? Um, they can apply by going to clcpd.com or to the city website. And uh, there's a bunch of information about incentives that we're offering um, for everybody that applies. But. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we'll make sure we post that information on our website, too, at kfoxtv.com. Don't go anywhere. After the break, Chief Story is going to talk about how the department is recovering from the tragic loss of one of their own, Officer Jonah Hernandez, and the event that's actually happening tonight to support first responders. Yeah, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, we are continuing with today's community conversation with LCPD Chief Jeremy Story, who's here with us live in the studio. Yes, absolutely. The department and the community of Las Cruces continuing to obviously recover from a very tragic loss. Officer Jonah Hernandez, who died in the line of duty. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you guys are continuing to move forward after that event? Yeah, it's really rocked our department and our community. It was the first officer we've ever lost in 100, almost 100 years. Um, and it's, it's been difficult, but there's been a lot of positive as well. And we've seen the community come together. We've seen the department come together like never before in the families. And so that's what we're hoping to continue from this is um, let that positive momentum take us to a better place. Now, you just mentioned um, Officer Hernandez obviously being the first in a very, very long time to die in the line of duty. And while that's a huge tragedy and no departments ever want any officers to be injured, right? Um, what can you say about the safety of the Las Cruces Police Department and why it has been that way for so long? You know, we've emphasized uh, training above and beyond, far above and beyond what's required by the state. And part of that is to try to keep our officers safe. Uh, they can go home every night to their families. And I do think that's part of it, you know, part of it is luck or the grace of God, but. You know, that body camera footage that you um, showed to the community and you released, obviously very, very hard to watch, very graphic. Can you talk about the message to the community that you were trying to portray by showing that and the response that you've received? You know, part of it is because, of course, I had to release it. And so I wanted to at least give as much context as I could. But the message was, it's very difficult to be a police officer. It's very dangerous. Um, and we need to also have some change in New Mexico. 
is enough is enough with um, the situation we find ourselves in because of our laws. Yeah, and that's something also that you, you talked about in that press conference about the crime issues that the city of Las Cruces is having and particularly what, what are some of those things that you're looking to curb, that particular crime that you're looking to curb? Um, changing a few of our ordinances, which are coming up to just give officers some tools, dealing with competency issues, which New Mexico has very poor laws when it comes to competency and bail reform. Those are some of the big issues that I see. Mm -hmm. You know, tonight actually there is an event happening called Blessings for Our Brave, and it's to bless first responders, you know, across our area. Can you talk about the collaboration for an event like this one that is set to happen, and I guess what you're hoping for comes out of it? Yeah, a lot of our um, base groups came together as well as others, and they organized this event. And so um, really it's just a lot of people wanting to show their support um, and have officers know that they want to support them and to give this blessing. And I think that's really important that it goes a long way to show that support. Yeah, what you, what you were seeing there was um, the information on the event. But if you are interested in attending, we will, we will also have all of this information up on kfoxtv.com. Yeah, and before we go, Chief Story, you know, over the past several weeks, we have seen businesses come together in groups and kind of talk about how they can help deal with the situation that they're dealing with when it comes to crime and how it's impacting business owners. We have seen you and the new mayor collaborate going to these meetings. I guess, what if some of them told you in the concerns and how are you hoping to put their minds at ease that you guys are working tirelessly to prevent crime from happening in the city of Las Cruces? Well, first, I think the reason we're seeing so much positivity and collaboration is because there's some hope, and that's that's very powerful. But the businesses are committed; they have a voice. They have. I'm one person. Our de our department can't do it all, but we do have to work together towards a shared goal based on facts. And that's what I've seen happen: is they've been very open to hearing what I believe the situation is, and then working to talk to uh, lawmakers and get stuff changed. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. I know appreciate these conversations it. are not easy, but we really do appreciate it. We're going to make sure to post this community conversation on our website at kfoxtv.com if you missed it. We'll be right back after the break.